today we're going to get to enjoy my voice being in uh, suboptimal condition. I'm a little bit under the weather, but <laughs> what a great time to make a video. And today I am going to chat, uh, but specifically kind of aiming my message toward my friends that would probably describe themselves as more left-leaning, uh, liberal, progressive, Democrat, uh, democratic socialist, that, that general um, area of the political spectrum. And I'm, I'm going to try to explain, and I'm not, I don't know how good I am at this because I, I so frequently speak with people who are on the conservative uh, spectrum. And I, I spend a lot of time, uh, even though they are so far opposed to what I uh, believe, I, I spend a lot of time conversing with people on that side. And then I spend time conversing with a lot of libertarians, which are much closer, the, the capital L libertarians, which when I say capital L, that means members of the libertarian party or supporters of the libertarian political party. And so this little chat is going to be directed toward people who are not of those conservative or libertarian ilks that are more of a, a progressive uh, group of people. <clears throat> so collectivism versus individualism. This is where I think many human beings, I think we skip this area and then we move on and we get into these arguments about other things and we haven't first established what our values are. I think values are so, so important. Uh, we need to know what our values are. And we need to know what the values are of the person with whom we're speaking. So if your greatest value in life is making money, and that's your whole goal is making money, and you put that above um, being honest, like being a principled, honest person. If you put money ahead of that, and then you and I are having a conversation about, you know, doing something about lying in order to make money or something like that, then you would see you, because you have a different value than mine, my value is honesty, your value is making money, then we're going to be arguing about, well, this is better, this is better. Well, we have different values. So for each of us, there's going to be a better thing to achieve our desired outcome. So I think we have to have these conversations to kind of establish the foundation of what it is that we care about and what we believe about. <clears throat> so collectivism versus individualism. This is where I think many people differ. So what is a, a collectivist? A collectivist is someone who believes that the, the entire group is more important than the individuals within the group. So this is someone who would say that, um, I don't know, if the, if the whole tribe is going to starve to death, then and one person could die in order to save the whole tribe, then that one person should be willing to die and everyone else should be willing to kill them in order to get this tribe uh, to be able to survive. Um, where this really comes into play in our regular civilization, because I don't, I don't know that that whole tribal <laughs> commit suicides, your tribe can live. I don't know that that would ever come into effect. But where it does come into play is in everyday life throughout the world. And, and right now it's it's COVID time <clears throat> and it's uh, mid, late 2021. And so there's this thought that the individual's freedom or liberty is not as important as the group's desire. So if the group is concerned that somebody should wear a mask or a helmet or something like that, the group's desires are more important than the individual's desires. And so this comes into play with, with taxation. When the government steals money away from the people who produce it or who get it through whatever means they get it, when the government steals that money and then hands it out to the collectivist, this is a good thing because the collectivist says it's not up to the individual uh, to keep any money that they earn. It is really everything belongs to the group. The group is more important. <clears throat> so another example would be, it's unpleasant, but gang rape. So the whole group really wants something except for 
one poor lady. She wants something else, but then the collectivists would say, no, it is what is important to the group, not what is important to the individual. So therefore, um, gang rape is okay. And there are a lot of other examples of where collectivism plays a role in our lives. And in the United States, which is where I live, <clears throat> it, I would say that 60% of people probably believe that collectivism is better. It is, if you can either have collectivism or individualism, they prefer collectivism. And these are mainly people who live in large cities, who have attended large public universities or any any part of the the university or what what's called the cathedral have you heard this term uh, it's evidently the the educational system and the media system and they kind of play off of each other and and so this would be any of the big colleges any of the the corporate press uh, they're kind of all one big movement and and it is more of a left leaning liberal movement and so people who are in in that group and who attend those the colleges that uh, preach that message, 60-ish percent of human beings would probably, in a poll, say that they prefer collectivism to individualism in the United States. So what is individualism? Well, as, as we're kind of figuring out, it's probably close to the opposite of collectivism. And individualism is the idea that the individual is of utmost importance. And that individual should pursue their happiness. And so long as they are doing so without initiating violence against other people, it is just fine for an individual to try to have way more money than the next individual or way more friends or way more whatever it is they want. It's up to them what they want to do. And the individual is more important than the group. Now, some individuals, I think I would consider myself to be one of these, I enjoy watching the group thrive and have fun. So I will give of my time and energy and purse to help the portions of the community, the collective, that I want to help. And, and that's not something that individualism is opposed to. It's just that's the individual's goal or their higher highest purpose is the individual. That's the highest thing for an individualist. So if you are a collectivist, or if you're an individualist, you have a very different value system from the other. And so if we had skipped this whole conversation, and we just began talking about, should some people, government, be able to stab a needle into all the people and squirt something into them, even if those people don't want that. And this is a mandatory thing that you're cast out of society if you don't do this. Then if you are a collectivist, then you would probably say, yes, an individual's rights, just like the rape victim or the person who earned money or, or the farmer who had put up a lot of hay, that hay doesn't belong to that farmer. It belongs to the whole community just because that particular farmer planted it and cultivated it and harvested it and stacked it and covered it doesn't mean that it belongs to that one farmer. It belongs to the whole commune. So it would depend on what your position is, collectivism versus individualism. Now, the individualist would say, well, no, it's my body. It's my choice. And nobody can tell me what I put into my body or what I do with my body as long as I'm not initiating violence against others. And so this is a, a foundational thing that I think it's worth thinking about a lot and deciding where do you stand. And, and you can change as you get more information. As I get more information, I, I, I'll change. I remember years ago, I was leaning more collectivist. And then I was given this book. I think I was 18 years old or so, 18 or 19. And I was given this book and I read a thick book, but just very good one. And I read it 1100 pages, I think something like that. And it made such a difference in my life because I thought about it and I thought how wonderful, I'm not going to tell you which it was individualism or collectivism, but how wonderful this one side was. And I've exposed myself to good arguments from both sides with an open mind. And I've come down on one side of the 
the, the, the thought, the topic. And I'm curious what you believe about this, which side you come down on. Do you think that the individual is higher or is the group higher? I look forward to seeing your comments below. Thanks for paying attention and listening and thinking. Oh.